Hyundai, the makers of the Ionic 5, Ionic 6, all of the Genesis vehicles that I love, don't just make cars, they also make this laptop right here and it is 344 times less expensive than the Ionic 6 that I really love. Before we drag Hyundai's laptops too much though, I just want to mention that uh, I discovered this laptop while I was looking for the absolute cheapest Windows laptop in existence. And in other markets, they do have other laptops that do look more better than this one. But in North America, uh, this is what we get and it's less than 200 bucks. Okay, first of all, the box looks not too bad. We have uh, some styrofoam. Oh, balls. Oh, geez. oh, it's warm. Why is it warm? 12 times two. Hmm. For a power brick, we get a 24 watt adapter. Wait a second. Editor, make sure you leave him, him calculating 12 times two. <laughs> okay, I know what 12 times two is, but normally calculating voltages is more difficult. <laughs> okay. okay, lots of plastic. First impressions, not too bad. Given the price range that this is, the build quality seems actually quite high. This right here is, well, it's, it's all plastic, but at the same time, it feels pretty decent as plastic. For IO, it is pretty decent. We have micro SD card reader, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB type A 2.0 on the other side, 3.0 and mini HDMI just so that you can make sure that you have the absolute worst way to get HDMI out of your laptop. Actually, micro HDMI might be worse. It does not have the required mass down in the base to be a one finger lifter. <laughs> <laughs> the balance on this is terrible. There's so little computer in here that the screen just makes it want to fall over. It, it hits on the chassis here, so it can't actually fully tip, but it just, it wants to go. There must be loads of battery in this. Oh, that sounds hollow. The actual build quality is not too bad. Like if we're pushing here, there is a lot of macro flexing, but it isn't super squishy, especially around the keyboard. It is for the most part, really quite stiff, although kind of, over on the right side here, there's a bit of a soft spot and mm. it's, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. It feels like there's lots of key travel. So the keyboard might still actually be fine. We also have a trackpad that is very small and a display that is actually not too bad. Okay, I was fooled because the bezels are quite large. This is a 14.1 inch display, although it really doesn't look all that bad. Um, okay, I'm, I'm about, four feet away from the screen and I can still see some pixels. Just like I can see the segue to our sponsor. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. MSI's back to school sale is on now. Looking for a new laptop for next semester? They've got those. Or what about a desktop PC that is totally for school and not for gaming, mom, I swear? Well, they've got you covered there too. And if you're into building your own PC, they even sell components online. Or maybe you don't need all of the above and just want some peripherals. Well, they've got those too. Check out MSI's back to school sale at the link down below. Go, go, go! Oh, these, these colors are not good. <laughs> One thing that I'm also noticing is the backlight is strobing. Oh, yep, there we go. And it gets way worse as I decrease the brightness which means that they are using PWM for brightness control. So that means that they're essentially just taking the backlight, flickering it on and off, and that's how they are making it appear that the display is dimmer than it actually is, which causes a lot of eye strain and some people get headaches when they look at PWM brightness control devices. I have the lab's test results for this display here, and it's actually not as bad as I was expecting, although, you can't overcome the resolution. 1366 by 768 is just not enough pixels for a 14.1 inch display. This is especially compared to like the 10.1 inch display that we had in our absolute cheapest laptop. That resolution didn't look so bad, but once we've blown it up to here, it's 
it's not looking too good. Now this is an IPS display, so the viewing angles are not too bad. Like if we look at it here, compared to the TN displays of yesteryear, it is so much better to view from an angle. But uh, that's where the good stuff ends. The peak brightness that we measured was 239 nits, which is about at the bottom of usable in a dark room. For the color space, it isn't too bad. 88% of sRGB is better than I'd expect for a device like this. Sometimes they come in in the 70s. And with an average Delta E of 8.6, there is a no way that you can ever edit professional photos on a device like this, but you were not planning to do that anyway. But it, I, I, I don't wanna be too mad about the display because like I said before, on devices like this, it was way worse in the past. What was also probably way worse were the track pads, but oh, this isn't, ooh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> First problem that I'm seeing is that it's really difficult to only left click and not right click at the same time. So if you, uh, if you have a listen here, uh, so I'm just pressing, I'm pressing on the left side. Oh. There's just one, you get any further in and you're going to be pushing the left and the right clicks at the same time. The actual trackpad itself, this isn't too, too bad. It's not good, but I would say that it is usable if nothing else. Maybe the keyboard is better. Wow, this is a really good keyboard. I was not expecting this at all, but uh, it's actually quite fantastic. I have experienced much worse keyboards from much more expensive laptops and much more reputable brands than this. It's not all good. This, this enter key sucks. Like you hit it down here, like you can, you can see the stability of that. It's just, it's just flopping all over the place. But there's quite a bit of travel, like probably 1.5-ish millimeters of travel. The stability of the keys, pretty good. They're not amazing, but they're pretty consistent. I'm going to give this keyboard like a A minus, I would say. It's nowhere near like the top tiers of laptop stuff, but when I was expecting like a B, B minus, coming it with something in the A's is very, very good for this laptop. This might be the most keyboard for the money in existence on a laptop right now. It does kind of sound like a snare drum though. Where I think this is going to fall very far behind uh, everything else is the performance. So right now, opening up Task Manager and uh, just the local system doing stuff has us at 100% CPU usage. In here we have the Intel Celeron N4020 which is not a good CPU, not at all. We have four gigabytes of DDR4 memory that's coming in at 2133 mega transfers per second. Uh, uh, tragedy. So I thought that this came with 128 gigabyte SSD, but it appears to be 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. That is slower, less reliable, and just generally terrible. I really hope that we have a spot to put an SSD in here because that would be just a massive upgrade. The wireless card says that it is a USB NIC. Why, Why is it using USB? But that said, it's 802.11ac, which is Wi-Fi 5. Wait, we're connected to Wi-Fi 5, yes. It is definitely Wi-Fi 5, which is pretty good for something like this. And of course we have Intel UHD graphics. Now one thing that is very, very unfortunate about this laptop is that it comes in Windows S mode. In my opinion, get rid of it. If you have a device that has Windows S mode, just yeet it away and get actual Windows. There will be a little bit more overhead, but this thing's so freaking slow anyway that uh, I don't think it'll make a difference. Open up the stress test that is running Crab Rave. And how are the speakers? Well, I guess first of all, can it run a 1080p video? Oh, not a problem. Can it do 4K video playback? Oh man, it can. For sound, we get 
two one watt speakers that are right down here. Wow, that sounds a lot better when you turn it upside down. <laughs> Can the Hyundai Highbook beat the Samsung S23? <laughs> Hyundai Highbook. <laughs> okay. It got absolutely murdered by my phone. Just completely killed. In fairness, my phone is a lot a lot more expensive. Now our labs did do some testing on the performance of this device. And as you might expect, it is absolutely abysmal. <laughs> it is difficult to have proper context for just how slow this machine is. So in Cinebench R23, it got a multi-core score of 645. For comparison, just cause we haven't done too much testing of really low powered stuff yet, the LG Gram with an i7-1260P gets you a multi-core score of 7,375. So that means even though it's five times more expensive, it is like 11 times faster. I don't even know how to tell you guys the results that we have because all of them are just this thing getting absolutely killed. It is going to be fun as we start fleshing out more and more devices that we've tested with our standardized stuff to see just how bad <laughs> this thing is. Cause I know for $300, you can get like a Ryzen 3 processor that's maybe two years old and those will absolutely murder this thing. Those are, those are actually good. <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, this is an S mode so we can't really do a whole lot more. Do you know any like browser games? Snake.io, can it run it? <laughs> the ultimate benchmark. Oh my God, I'm dropping frames. This is actually difficult. I'm, I am lagging in snake.io, which is kind of a problem. <laughs> oh, webcam. All right, here we have got the two megapixel camera on the Hyundai Highbook, and uh, it does not look the best. It, it's struggling, kind of no matter the lighting, no matter what's happening, it's having difficulties. Maybe if you want to do some sort of like a Gen Z, make it look like old time stuff, this would be a good camera for you. All right, let's see here. 62 megabyte file made when we recorded the webcam. Oh wow, that was really fast. I wasn't expecting that. If you want to transfer files over the network, the Wi-Fi card in this seems not too, too bad. That was like 30 megabytes per second. But compared to the cheapest laptop on the market, it really isn't doing too bad. Let's take it apart. It looks like we have a secret door. I wonder what's in it. Oh, oh man, that is so good. Look at that. With just two screws, you can open up this little hatch and add in an actual SSD, which is going to be a huge improvement for this device. You'll have more storage, and even more importantly, it'll just be way faster and you don't have to worry about it EMMCing itself into oblivion. <laughs> There's not much in there. There's a whole lot of space here and here, and particularly right here, where there's a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> it's also incredibly similar to the innards of our cheapest laptop. I wouldn't be surprised if this came from the exact same factory. The battery though is 37 watt hours, which might actually not be too bad when you consider that this processor is just doing nothing all the time. <laughs> so I'm going to guess that this thing's able to get in an endurance run, when you try, about five hours of battery life. This is way better than expected. Six hours and 22 minutes of battery life with this thing. That is better than a Dell XPS 15 and many other laptops that are many, many times more expensive than this. And also if you do a full stress test, it still gets you three hours and 14 minutes of battery life. That's a phone. Oh, my, my phone's way better than this in every way. I just mean the size. 
That's just, that's a phone. Yeah. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Note 9 for scale. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, would I rather have this or an Android tablet? Probably this. Android tablets are really bad. <laughs> right? So we put it into $175. Do you know what I can get for $175? Mm. Literally anything else. That's not oh, this laptop. Can. If you buy laptops <laughs> no, no, that no, are no, this no. cheap, please get a Chromebook. This is Windows and S mode, which is so much worse than a Chromebook. Chromebooks are usable. You can use a Chromebook and it's like, it's not great, but it's very far from the experience that you have at this thing. If you need to have Windows, either get something that's used or just keep on saving up until you can get something that's like $250, $300, it will be like five, six times faster. It will be not the same experience, not even close. So huge thanks for watching, hit like, get subscribed, and if you wanna watch some videos about Hyundais that I actually like, they'll be right down there. Have a great day.